<laughs> that was my favorite moment that has ever happened. That was wonderful. It's five o'clock, everybody. Hi, Mom. <laughs> I was eating some dessert. I I apologize for that. I why well, never I, apologize. I, I was be pro professional. Um, <laughs> loved that moment. What was the dessert? It's what? really good. So you take like an ice pop, you know, like, like organic fruit juice and you make an ice pop out of it or something. And then you put it in a glass and let it melt a little bit. Then you put coconut whipped cream, whipped coconut milk on it, not whipped cream. Don't go dairy. And then you have someone you love very much or just the other side of your personality feed it to you <laughs> that's amazing it's the it's a beautiful yeah it just reminds you that you know uh yeah it's a good thing on, on, a, on, a, on a on a difficult day all you need is love and sugar yeah yes right agreed it's agreed a, all right i'm so sorry i derailed us yeah, go ahead i'm so sorry. sorry this is a serious show here we're serious people this is watch me work we're uh it's uh monday all day long. And um, for those of you who are, who are, who are new, uh, I'm Susan Lloyd Parks. I'm the writing resident of the Public Theater. We've been doing this show for 11 years, ever since I sat in the lobby and went, gee, I want to I want to reach out to people and offer, um, you know, artistic cheerleading uh, to them as they work on their projects. So here we are. Uh, we sit together and work for 20 minutes. And then we talk with you i talk with you about your work and your creative process not my work but your work watch me work is all about you so uh you, because uh thanks to this public theater for helping us uh continue to create this show thanks to howl round they came on a few years ago to help us live stream and they've come on in full force together with the public theater to help us create this online community uh for which i am personally very grateful and Love seeing you guys four or five days a week. Uh, what's next, Audrey? I have to tell them. To, Audrey will tell you how to get in touch. I'll tell you how to get in touch. Yeah. So um, if you're inside of the Zoom, all you need to do is, I'm so sorry, my partner's also on a call. Um, <laughs> all you have to do is click on the raise your hand button, which is in a participant tab, likely at the bottom of your screen on a laptop or the top, if you're on an iPad or a tablet. And if you're watching on HowlRound.tv, you can tweet at us at, at WatchMeWorkSLP with the hashtag HowlRound, H-O-W-L-R. R O U N D, or you can tweet at Public Theater NY, or write into our Instagram, and that's the way you can ask some questions. So many ways, so many ways to get there. Okay, um, so we're going to work for twenty minutes, and then we're going to talk for the remainder of the hour. Here we go. Mm.
all right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. Okay. We've got a question. Uh, Melania. Hey, sis. How you doing? <laughs> Are you there? There you go. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, I am. Thank you, Audrey. Hi, Susan, Lori. How are you? I want first, I want to thank you very much for the visit of Luis Alfaro last week. It was such an amazing experience. I couldn't stop writing down the things that he was saying because it, for me, for my soul was so eye-opening and it's helping me a lot to process and think about situations that I am living in my life. And it, it was beautiful, really beautiful. And then uh, I, because there was something that I love about his visit that was he, the relationship he made between theater and faith and all these situations. So I wanted to share something that happened to me. And I think that is thanks to you and all my classmates here. It's that in my church, they had a summer camp for children and they didn't know even that I write. I never talk about it because I didn't have the courage to say I love writing, I love to write, I am a writer. But since I am with you and all this beautiful group, I took that courage. And naturally, it came out, out of me that I write. So they said, OK, we have this summer camp online uh, because of all the coronavirus. So we would love you, if you want you, to write the introductions to the videos and the outros, if you would like it. And I said, I could love it. So suddenly, my faith, my love for children, the, 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 the online situation, and all, appear and it was something yes that I know that God put through you and all this group so I wanted to share that hey. thank, you. <laughs> thank you you know there's a saying that says Melania God works through people and you know what whatever your faith is or whatever we can say that the great spirit works Amen. through people and and you're an example of that and you're all examples of that you know Thank, thank you. you for sharing that. Oh, oh thank you. I, I, I thank God because it was about you and all Luis Alfaro said, and it, it's all together, you know, with this, God is working through all of you. So thank you. Yeah, thanks. Oh, what a beautiful story. Yay. Happy writing. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, Melania. Um, okay. Up next, we've got Stalina. Are you there? Hello. Hi. Um I'm writing uh, something with two characters, and I was wondering if, um, if you you need a third character to make it complicated, or if you, if you can make it complicated with just two characters. <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, <laughs> uh, you can make it complicated. I mean, imagine yourself sitting in your you know room. It can get complicated with just one person. It can get very complicated with two people. There are a lot of great two person plays out there where you really, you know, and it can certainly, you don't need a third um, to make things complicated. If your play, if you feel like two characters is what I want, then I think you can, they can go at it just with two people. Okay, great, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, all right. Up next, we've got Sorry, Karima. Can you hear me? Hi. Hi. I just wanted to say thanks also for the guest that you had on last week. Because I too got so much information and I also got the book that he recommended, that acting book. It is good. So I just really just wanted to say thank you because I it, it, it was a lot the way because because also I'm an actor too. So the way that he spoke visually and all that, it just, it just ran, it just poured in. So thank you so much. And I really, really am so happy that this is being done. And I'm hoping when all this is over, that this can be done. Okay? So thank you so much from the bottom of Thank you, Karima. I'm going to send uh, Luisa another note. Uh, 
he and I sometimes write back and forth the text back and forth. I will, and I will tell him how much you guys are still singing his praises and, and being very grateful. His visit was, was, and I, of course I always invite him back, you know, he's got his schedule, you know, but, um, in terms of continuing after the COVID thing, what's really great about HowlRound and Audrey and the, the whole team at the public is that they've made it very doable. You know what I mean? They've made it possible. It's not a huge mountain to climb. Uh, and you guys have really made it um, possible for us to, to meet uh, every day or four days a week or whatever. So my intention is just to keep continuing and keep inviting guests in because it's always great to hear from lots of folks um, who love you guys and want you guys to succeed even if they haven't met you yet. So, um, so th that's my intention. That's our intention. That's where, you know, as long as we have zoom today, you notice I got a wall, but I'm not in my mom's backyard. I got my own internet <laughs> in my little rented house. So, so we will continue. So thank you. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Karima. Thank you. Nice to see you, Karima. Um, all right. Up next, we've got Aaron. Hi. Um, Hi. it's really, really cool to, to see you. Um, I was wondering, I'm working on a, a piece that's about the protests in Minneapolis and the protests mm. in the world. And I'm wondering, as I'm writing it, I'm wondering, you know, this, I probably won't be able to show anybody this for another like few months. And if all of this ends up blowing over somehow, or like even if a year from now I'm done with it, like how do you keep something so specific current? when it takes so long for a play to really develop. Um, yeah, or, uh, that's a great question, Aaron. And um, you, you, we think, think of, we can like reverse engineer, think of plays that have endured for longer than the hot minute or, you know, when they were written, you know what I mean? Um, my suggestion is grounded in, you know, you have the, the the uh, things on the surface, right? That are like biggest in our vision because they're right in front of us, you know what I mean? Like that. And then yeah. you have the things that are maybe not quite as visible, but that are the more enduring uh, nuggets, kernels of wisdom, um, issues, if you will, character traits, if you will, you know what I mean? That might not be right in the front, right? And I would say ground your play show these but ground your play in these does that does that make sense so you want the enduring qualities i mean why do we let's just take a play off the top of my fences you know fences was written in i don't know when um maybe uh the 80s you know we still want to see it you know why do we still want to see or why you know i for colored girls who have considered suicide when the rainbow isn't right so intozaki wasn't just writing it about you know uh uh, what was going on in the 70s for, for women of color, right? She was rooting it in, in really deep character studies, um, things that would endure or take plays more conventional, uh, well-known, Hamlet, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, or even Hair, the musical, you know, right. that still rings true um, because it's not simply about the moment, it's about all time. Does that make sense? It does, thank you. Okay, so root it in the things that are very much of the moment. That's very important to speak about where we are now, but also things that endure, um, that keep coming around again. You know, those character traits that keep coming around again. Okay? Okay. Okay. Bye. Thanks, Erin. Yay, good luck <laughs> with your writing. Um, up next, we've got Emery. Oh, I've my hold on my mouse ah oh, there we go hi 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 i'm here hi <laughs> um hi thank you so much for this this is really really fun um something i've been something i've been that's been showing up for me is that i feel like lately i've been i haven't been wanting to show up for my work and i find it and i find it really easy to like if something feels hard or like honestly like painful like my first instinct as of lately is to just like throw it away and like 
do something else and like work on something else. But then of course, like the same feeling comes up for that. And it's like this cycle of me, like starting new things, a lot of new things over and over. And so I guess I'm wondering um, what you, like, if you have any advice about like sticking with something, even when it really hurts, because I know that's when it's good after you get, after you crack something, but I'm just having a hard time like sticking with it right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh two words you use the word crack you didn't use breaking the back in, in the old days they used to talk about figuring out a story or a play or a screenplay and they'd say i, I need to break the back of my screenplay you you, you didn't say that, that but crack it you know um and i always went "Ooh, <laughs> i want to crack it i want to like embrace it i want to pull it in i want to hug it i want to incorporate it I want to eat it. I want to digest it. I want to make it a part of my body. You know what I mean? This yeah. is where the work is, Emery. You know that. I know I'm telling you something you know, but I'm going to tell you anyway. This is where the work is. Pema Chodron, the Buddhist nun. We know Pema Chodron. If you don't, that's a good book. She makes books that are little and you can carry them around in your pocket when you go protesting. Um, awesome books. This is where the work is. Right. So in so know so know that this is where the work is. So it's essential, and you know that, right? Know that you're not alone. If you have nobody else, you got us. You know what I mean? Here's your squad. Here we are. We're all doing it. We're all working on those hard things. I mean, I don't want to speak for everybody, but just speaking for myself, I weep. I read the news and cry, or throw something. You know what I'm saying? You know, I mean, it's like I throw my, or at least I'm throwing my hands up in the air going, what the fuck? You know what I mean? So we're, those feelings are being felt. You're not alone if you're feeling those feelings. Or I'm so overwhelmed, I don't know what to do. You know, um, putting your work aside, it might be the thing that might feel good for a day or so, but ultimately it's not going to feel, it's not, it's not the right choice. So reduce the task this is really good this is really good a timer it's a timer it's not a phone can you tell right so you you set it for 10 minutes and maybe you'll only do your work for 10 minutes a day right mm -hmm. maybe that's all you have to do 10 minutes a day and marie that's all you know inch into it inch it along right because it wants to be done Right, your work came to you, whether it's a play or a movie or a song or whatever, because it wants you to sing it, Emery. And you're the one to sing the song or write the play or write the novel or what have you, right? So little tiny bits of work, of work time, 10 minutes at a pop, maybe three times a day, right? Also give yourself permission to write in a less than brilliant style, right? Write a shitty first draft. You know? Okay. Yeah. Those of us who are professionals do that all the time. All the time. Okay? Thank you so much. Okay, so just keep plugging along. And if nothing more than you come here four days a week, Monday through Thursday, and you write with us for 20 minutes, that's good too. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. You're welcome. Good question. Thank you. Thanks, Emery. Um, all right. Up next, we have Jacob. Go for it, Jacob. Hi, Susan Lai. Hi. Um, so my question is about sort of how to, it's sort of, it's sort of a similar question to Emery's, but a little bit different, I guess, in that I, so I'm, a, I'm transitioning right now into a period where I will be like writing full time as my job, essentially. Um, uh, which is exciting and the first time that that has happened. Uh, um, and, um, but the flip side of that is that basically I have four projects <laughs> in order to make that work. I have mm -hmm. four different projects, right. Um, that I have to work on that are all in different phases of the thing. And, um, all of which like have to move forward to some degree. Um, so it's not like I can just be like, oh, I'll just work on whichever one is, is the most exciting right now. Um, they all sort of have to move forward on a somewhat, you know, in the next three months. Um, 
And so I'm wondering if you have any advice in terms of how to create a sustainable practice that holds that kind of space. Um, I have time, time I have. Okay. Um, which okay. is usually not a thing I have, okay. uh, but, but I don't really know how to, how to structure or, or hold that time in a way that, that is functional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so are all these four projects, good question, Jacob, are all these four projects, are they all related to your working uh, as a writer for money or, uh, or? Yeah, they're, they're basically, yeah, it's, it's essentially, yes. Uh, okay. One of them is just for me, I guess. Great. But I are, like one's a commission, one is um, part of a like writing group. Um, and one is like a, re a movie rewrite, all of which are, yeah, like they're the thing that are paying my bills right now. Fantastic. So uh, have you ever been uh, in an airplane? I have, yeah. Great, great. Okay, great. This is going to work. Okay. So, uh, may but maybe you haven't been an air traffic controller, right? Not then. Okay. Okay. That's okay. You don't need to be. You can pretend you're an air traffic controller and you know, they keep all those planes in the air, right? Okay, and that you're gonna you're gonna be developing that skill, and you'll be I'll be right alongside with you. I've got about six different projects for six different people, and they're all paying me, and they all want them done like last month. You know what I'm saying? So so what, what we're doing is we're flying those planes. You ever look out the window of a plane? You're right. You're sitting there, and you look out the window, and you see a plane go by like zoom like that. You've ever have you ever seen that? Like oh shit. It's going so fast and it's kind of close. Not really, but you know, right? That's how fast you're going. That's what you look like to them. So what we want to do is create the ability to run all our planes toward their various destinations, right? With all safely, all getting there safely. Um, you can either do it again. You can, you can cut your, uh, divide your days or divide your week, right? Um, for example, like, uh, Saturday for me this past Saturday was, I'm going to just work on this project a, let's just say, right? So all I did that day was just work on project a Sunday was, I'm just going to work on project B. I have things that I need to do to bring it to a certain level of completion on its timetable. And I'll just work on that project, you know, today. Monday tricky because I have meetings and all the project to work on. So it's like I'll pick a smaller piece of project C to work on. If I get that over the finish line, good job. And I'll do all my meetings. You see, so I take days to work on different projects. That's how I do it. Some people say from 10 to noon, I'm going to work on one project. Then from noon to five, I'll work on another project. That's a way to do it too. Does that, is that at all? It certainly seems worth trying. It, it, yeah, I, and I'm not, I'm just, I'm suggesting that it, it works very well for me. I do days. Um, the thing about the weekends, it, it, at least if you're working for, for, for television, the great thing, about, they don't call you on the weekends. It's amazing. It's like, oh my God, so great. So you can silo your brain, you know, and kind of get stuff done. Um, or you can pick two days to, from uh, Monday, Tuesday, I'm working on project A, Wednesday, you know, you know Wednesday, Thursday, Project B, Friday, Project C, Saturday, Project E, like that. You can kind of do, and just like dim sum. I'm using all these metaphors, but you know what I'm talking about, right? Just, the, or the lazy Susan, you just move it around. Mm -hmm. But when you're in a project, only work on that project. Right. Even if it's just two hours a day, two hours, I'm just gonna work on Project A. You work on Project A and give yourself little goals. Like I'm gonna, read the script of project a and start in the back of my mind thinking of a game plan to for the rewrite for example does that make yeah totally doable totally doable totally exciting that this is where your life is right now very very thrilling attitude of gratitude of course right even when we're overwhelmed we ha we're so thankful that we got this these jobs you know okay and keep checking in with us because you know I love you. I know you're from that other incarnation and I love you. So keep checking in, okay? Will do. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jacob. Um, all right.
Up next, we've got Lynn. Hi, oh. Lynn. Oh, I thought I was on a wait list. Oh, hi. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, a number of months ago, uh, I was doing this workshop with a wonderful playwright called Antoinette Nwanda. And uh, we were doing this workshop and uh, then doing a lot of research, you know, and I realized I was so, uh, how can I say, I didn't have the information, you know? So uh, I started reading a lot and then this happened, especially Dubois' book about um, the reconstruction. You know, we're never taught this, we're never taught. I mean, the Civil War was, and Lincoln was shot. Basically, that's what you get in school, at least when I was growing up, you know? And it's been a, a revelatory experience, but also as it informs me, you know, it, I feel this shame. Hmm. And uh, uh, as I spoke to a number of friends of mine, African-American friends, they said, don't live in the shame. You know, you have to do something. We're tired. It's your job now. I mean, it was like a command, my friend Hattie. And, and um, I read and read, I cannot imagine. And this is a moment and I'm alive in this moment of history where things could change, you know? I mean, there, and I don't know how to actively do something about it, except in my very small life, you know? Um, I, I feel more informed, but the resonance of this history just, lays on my heart, you know, like a, you know, a, a huge rock, a stone. Mm -hmm. And um, it wasn't that I wasn't aware, it was that I wasn't living it. It was, um, so I guess my question to you is, how do you not live in the shame? And when I write, it's interesting, the play I'm writing is, is certainly about my background, but I see similarities and with, but it's not the same, but the similarities between anti-Semitism and this profound, uh, 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 profound centuries of, of uh, discrimination. Um, but how do I integrate that and, and use it to be of service, to be, you know, having more information doesn't make me, uh, it just makes me feel less, how's that, you know? Mm -hmm. So how do I actively, and, as an artist, as a, as a human, just as a human being, actively help the change, you know? And I'm older now. I mean, I've had my years of protesting and I just, you know, I don't get on the line anymore because it's dangerous for me, you know? Um, so in there is my question. So Lynn, I mean, the first thing I have to say is thanks for asking the question. And the second thing I say is, because I think it's important to say at times like this, because um, you are one of the folks, you know, we have a, a, a wonderful collection of people who would show up pretty much every week when I sat in the lobby. Yeah. It's easier to show up now, but Lynn would bring her behind to the lobby and we say, just get so, your ass in the chair. Yeah. yeah, so I, you know, I can say, Lynn, thank you for asking the question. And I, I'll just go on a limb and say, I know your heart. I know your heart. And it's good. And it's righteous. And I think that 
it is very important for all of us involved in this cultural revolution to acknowledge the wrong that have been done. And acknowledge when we're trying to do right. You know? Because the work is hard and we're not going to get it right all the time. White, black, brown, POC, BIPOC, I don't care who we are, we're not always going to get it right. We're not always going to say the right thing in the right way and you know, it's hard. Um, it's difficult. Um, just speaking for myself as a black woman living in America for all these years, I am angry. I go to Hollywood, I work a lot in Hollywood. And, ooh, I'm the angry sister. In theater circles, they're like, why aren't you angrier? I'm like, fuck y'all, you know what I mean? All y'all, you know what I'm saying? But, but I navigate those I navigate those areas, you know what I mean? I try to just be righteous and bring love. So Lynn, I think, you know, I think your friend, if she says don't live in the shame, she knows you a lot better than I do. Um, if you feel shame, feel it, but let us not use anything we're feeling as an excuse to avoid real substantive positive change. So if you're gonna feel shame, and you think, well, that's enough. I'm feeling bad. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's not enough. If I say I'm feeling angry, that's not enough either. You know, if someone says I'm feeling a lot of ideas, that's not enough either. It is a combination of these things. We have to get a lot smarter. We have to make leaps in our understanding of ourselves and each other that we have not yet made because that's why we're still here. Because like Pima Children would say, here's the work. The work needs to be done. You know, so Lynn, if you're feeling ashamed, feel it. Cause I'm gonna keep feeling angry. I'm gonna keep figuring out ways to channel it. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I, you're you're muted though, sis. I can't hear you. Compassion or motivations. You know, it, it, anger alone is not going to make a change. But anger and compassion. Well, don't, I, I would ask, I feel you, like, that, I feel you, like, you know, I, I, I know, that's why I'm saying shame alone isn't going to make a change. I say for anybody, if you're using your dominant feeling to avoid addressing the systemic racism that is part of this country, then you need to add a little something else to it to activate it. You see what I mean? So if you're only feeling shame, add something else to it to activate it. If you're only feeling anger, add something else to it to activate it. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a multi-pronged approach right now because it is so, it has poisoned our whole culture, our world culture. It is so much a part. And, and, and Lynn, you said you live in it, but you're not feeling it. And now it's weighing heavy on your heart. It's been weighing on my heart my whole life. Or before I was born, because my parents were carrying it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, welcome. Welcome to the shitstorm, sister. Here we are. The work, this is where the work begins. If you're feeling shame, just activate it. K keep active in any way you can. And we won't expect, like, we won't expect everybody, everybody's allowed to operate in rough draft mode. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we don't have to be perfect. We just have to be committed to, to making that positive change, you know? And doing your work. And, and and again, don't use the, the f bad feelings to not get your writing done. <laughs> <laughs> My ass is getting bigger. <laughs> Thank you, Lynn. Um, all right, we've got about eight minutes left um, and we're gonna go to Julandre. Are you there? Yes, hi. Hi, hi everybody. Thank hey, you brother. for this. Um, I, I'm also um, sort of like, I think it was Kimmy, Jim, um, writing about something in the, in the moment. Uh, obviously, there's a responsibility to be uh, telling truth right now. And so um, working on some essays. And my question really is about ending um, and release, though it first occurred to me in terms of revision and research. But, you know, I, I still, unfortunately, have this fear of um, 
maybe sounding like an idiot or um, even though we don't really care about that too much um, in, in these days, but, but really just a fear of a lack of clarity in my own thinking. Um, and so, you know, if I'm riding along and that kind of drives me to say, oh, well, let me, you know, um, revise this again or read three more books or, you know, search, search every current periodical to see what people are saying. Um, and, you know, I know that's impossible, but, uh, and so that kind of prevents me from simply submitting a thing um, to, to do my work and, and, and speak my truth about what's going on. And so, um, yes, advice about that, please. That's a beautiful question. I remember, if I remember correctly, brother, the first time we spoke on this show, you were outside, you live in LA? Do you no, live no, in no, I'm in New York, but I, 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 I usually am in a park or something. Oh, you were in a park. inside beautiful. today, luckily. <laughs> beautiful, okay, cool. No, I was just remembering that, that uh, picture of you. Um, but I would say um, that it could be your essay, your essay could be you know, part one of many part seven of, you know what I mean? And as your clarity develops, so could your understanding, you know? Like I said, I don't think you have to get it perfect the first time. I think if there's an urgency, urgency to what you're saying and they're essays and you wanna get them out there. Uh, we talked with, uh, was it Vernita? Um, maybe last week, she was also writing some essays that, um, and I said, well, you can always do part two or part three, that kind of thing. Would that be helpful? Yeah, I think so. I guess, I guess my, yeah, I, I think maybe that provides an opportunity to get things right that I got wrong. I think that's, that's my fear. Yeah. It's like, oh, I haven't, you right. know, read all right. the latest right. thought pieces on this. And so there's also a little bit like, am I, am I saying the same thing? Am I adding to this conversation or, right. or am I just, you know, doing doing my personal therapy on I understand I would say all of those are allowed you're able to echo so, what someone else has said you're able to you're allowed to echo what someone else has said you are allowed to do your own personal therapy um, if maybe man you have friends you have like trusted readers I know I do and you could maybe send the document to some trusted readers and say, give this a read and give me some feedback. Tell me what you think. You know, does this sound like it's making sense or have I left anything out that I need to put in? Or if I need to write a second essay, you know, like that. You can get great feedback from trusted friends who, you know, want you to succeed. You know, does that make sense? That's always good to have readers out there. Um, if you have a reading group, you might want to read it aloud to your, to your colleagues and comrades, you know? Um, that's always helpful to me anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for asking the question. Thank you, Julian. Very nice to see you. Um, all right, we don't have any questions at the moment. We've got about four, well, three and a half minutes left. Oh, I spoke too soon. Danielle. Hello. Hi, SLP. Thank you so much for this space. This has truly been like my my church during this time. I'm so yeah. grateful for this community. It's just so inspiring. So thank you. Um, thank you. My question is uh, kind of related, but in, in a way the opposite of Jacob's. Um, I'm, a, I'm about to start actually today is my first day of a new job. Um, and I'm grateful for the work and I'm scared that I'm going to stop writing because um, it's so much easier for me to prioritize things that people are asking me for, things that are happening in a group, things I'm being paid for over things that I believe are my truth, my imp important for me to, to bring out into the world. Um, and I'm just wondering if you have any thoughts on, on that, on like, um, on in addition to this space, which is so, so helpful uh, to, to, to sort of like find the time, just um, shifting that balance a little bit um, and, and finding ways to sort of value the things <laughs> you care about and believe in and want to be putting into the world at the same level as like things that are, um, you know, supporting you and that, and that other people uh, are asking you for. 
That's a great question, Danielle. And so I'm silly question, but will you be uh, able to stay at home while you work or will you have to go into the yeah, yeah, it's going to be a work from home thing, at least for now, for the first Okay, time. and do, are they expecting to see your face, you know, what, at a certain hour of the day? I mean, what, what's, um, or what are the... Yeah, plans? yeah, I think, like, generally, they're, they're on the West Coast, I'm on the East Coast, so I kind of get to do the West Coast hours, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, I, I will be expected to work, like, normal work hours on their time zone. Great. <laughs> Did you win? Of course you will. Of course you will. This is so great. You got to say thank you to the spirit for giving your job. It is based in the West Coast because so 10 o'clock, uh, like 10 to 6 kind of thing. Yeah. 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 Great. Yeah. So 10 o'clock L.A. time is what time for us? One. One. Great. <laughs> OK, Danielle. So you have basically and can you get up out of bed by, I don't know, eight in the morning? Yes. <laughs> great. Great. Do you like to do you have an exercise routine or a meditation program also? Or what do you what do dog, you like? To do? Dog and a, a little yoga thing that I like. Uh, to, yeah. Dog and yoga. Fantastic. OK, so you've got walking your dog, right? Doing your yoga, add maybe five minutes of meditation at the end, you know, something like that, which is like whipped cream. And then around, let's say. 10 o'clock in the morning, don't want to rush you, right? <laughs> You're going to do your writing from 10 o'clock in the morning to say, I don't know, noon. Mm -hmm. um, and then you close the computer, whatever, you close up your, your writing station and you get ready for work, whatever you got. I don't know if you got to wear an outfit, you know, whatever you got to do, right? Fancy on top, pajamas on bottom. <laughs> there you go. Fancy on top, pajamas on bottom. And, you know, you look professional right now to me. So, is that doable? Basically, yeah. you're going to prioritize yourself, your work, your, your, your heart's desire by putting it in the front of the day. And then you will be at their service cheerfully and gratefully at their service from 10 to 6 LA time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And you, you, you just have to be, you just have to be really uh, in love with yourself and respectful of yourself and know that this is totally worth it. Okay. That gives you a ton of time. Yeah. And you don't need to be writing more than like two hours, three hours a day. You know, anyway, you'll get your work done. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks you can like you slip know. away. You can slip away and like come see, watch me work or some shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have to go to the bathroom. You know? <laughs> All right. It is 601. Oh, All right. Crazy town. We love you guys. We love you. Thank you, SLP. As a reminder, you can always sign up on the Public Theater website by 3 p.m. Eastern time, and I will send you a link between 3 and 4.30 p.m. Eastern, Monday to Thursday. No, we love you guys. See you tomorrow. Thank Mwah. you, SLP. Thank you. Thank you, Audrey. Thanks for around.